You're watching Personal Finance with Coach Kelvin. Let's get into the video. Hey guys, Coach Kelvin here. And today I wanna to talk to you about what to do when the markets are red and you feel like you're losing all your wealth. You know, you don't just wanna sell and there might be a reason why. So, for example, if we look at the, the I guess, intentions of a passive investor, you're looking to add funds into the market on a regular interval and not worry about the share price no matter what. So if you see that there's a crash in the market, and let's say it drops 20% and we enter a bear market, your knee-jerk reaction may be, oh my God, I'm losing all this money, I need to sell out now while I'm still ahead. But this can be detrimental because remember, whilst the market is low, you can buy in at a discounted rate. So if we're always adding funds on regular intervals, you're basically gonna average down your normal buy-in rate. Of course, if you feel like there are other opportunities out there, selling some and putting money elsewhere may be ideal, but we don't wanna take that risk of interrupting the compound effect on our long-term holds, such as low-cost index funds or growth plays that we wanna have for a very long period of time. And by a long period of time, I'm not talking 12 months, I mean, you know, 10, 20, 30 years. So when we look at how much money it takes to basically, you know, retire early on, if we constantly lock in capital gains and losses and we make all these trades because we see a drop in the market, we're going to pay a higher tax rate as we're building our wealth up to the point of that early retirement. So it's very important that we actually hold off a little bit and we don't be so reactive to what the share price is doing in the short term. In the short term, the share price might look like this, but in the long term, it'll be a gentle curve upwards. In the ultra long term, it'll look exponential, okay? so. If you see that there's a significant share price drop of say 10, 20, 30%, this is a buying opportunity, not really a selling opportunity. So here's what I want you to do. Write a little contract to yourself before you even begin your first investment, telling yourself that I plan to hold every purchase I make for, a, for an extended period of time, whether that be five years, 10 years, 20 years, it's up to you. But know that every purchase you make, especially when you're looking at index funds, the intention is not to sell out in the short term. So if you have this contract with yourself that you will not touch those funds no matter what, unless of course you come into an emergency, then you know, you've actually got this opportunity to increase your, your wealth and you know that those funds are untouchable in your eyes. So if you have a few more speculative plays, you may have a different approach where, yeah, if it builds up to this price, I'm happy to sell out, or if it drops this much, I'm happy to sell out. But when it comes to your index fund and your passive investing approach, just try not to sell for any reason, okay? Because that money is going to grow better by spending time in the market, not from you trying to time the market. What's to say that 20% drop that happens today or in this month is going to continue downwards if we were to sell? It's possibly not the case and we could sell out. The market recovers significantly fast and then our buying price is going to be higher later on. So this is obviously going to be a huge problem because we'll reduce the amount of shares we would have had, and therefore we limit the amount of growth we could have had. So if we're looking at more of an active investing approach, the strategy changes, okay? So if you see a, a single company, okay, has a 20% drop in share price, there may be some reason for this. There could be some social media hype about the company or some sort of controversy that's gone around the media. For example, if there was some sort of uh, corruption allegations in the news and the company's dropped on those uh, sort of news articles or blog posts, etc., about it, just because people are starting to sell out out of fear, you need to assess, does this change the essence of the company? Does this mean uh, the company's not going to thrive in the short and long-term future? Has management changed? Will someone be fired, etc.? So if these opportunities don't become worse, that drop in share price allows you to buy in and get more, more shares. And that short-term pain for that company may become your long-term gain. What I want you guys to think about when buying individual stocks is you want to well research the people involved in running your companies, okay? So pretend that you are a part owner by owning shares, you own that company. So you wanna know who's running, who's running the business, who's in control of the financials, where the company is associated, so which market they are delving into, the products they're selling or the services they're providing. Now, if the whole fundamentals of the company do not change and there's a dip in share price, and you can see they haven't taken on a lot of debt, 
they've maintained very high cash in their um, balance sheet and the, the people you want running the business are still running the business, then I can't see any rational reason why you might want to sell that business. In fact, it would make more sense to buy more shares while they're on that short-term discount. But let's say, on the other side of that coin, the things do change. Let's say the company does a capital raise at a really low price. They also take on some debt because they want to fund the next venture, but it looks too risky or you don't understand what they're going into. Then you may not really understand exactly what it is you want to do in this situation. So the best strategy may be to hold, not to sell, and not to buy. Just hold and see what happens. You might uh, change what the, the buyout goal was. So if, uh, if the goal was once that money doubles, I'm gonna sell my initial investment and then just keep the house money in there. You may adjust that goal slightly based on this change in the news or in the company's proceedings. Now, if we look at something else, like there's a change in the management team, the CEO resigns, somebody gets fired, etc. This may change your trust in the company. So, for example, uh, let's look at Tesla as a company that has a lot of brand loyalty just because everybody loves Elon Musk. If Elon Musk were to leave Tesla, there's a high chance, I believe, that people would sell out of their stocks just because they're following what Elon Musk is doing, and they may not even believe all that much in what Tesla is doing. So even though the same uh, chief executive officers, um, the same managers and staff will be on hand still trying to achieve the same goals, just because they wouldn't have such a visionary um, CEO, there's a, there's a chance that uh, once Elon Musk were to leave Tesla, that these people will just leave um, their holdings in the company, they will sell out, just because they're fearful that without such an innovative leader, the quality of that business will get less. So if you don't trust the management team and you don't trust that the innovation and the return on invested capital is there, then it makes sense that maybe you would sell down on your position, if not sell out completely, to put those funds somewhere else where a greater opportunity exists. Now obviously, like all active investing, this becomes a little more risky because you're having to time the market a little bit. You wanna sell out at a point where the price is high and buying somewhere else where it's low on a particular business or company. Now that's obviously quite difficult and you may decide that you don't have the audacity to perform that well by doing so. So you could sell out of this individual business and then put more funds into an index fund or a real estate investment trust or a listed investment company, etc. But probably the worst approach you can take is just sell and dump your money anywhere else where without doing your due diligence and well researching the company. So when the markets are red, you need to have more of a level-headed approach so that way you don't act out of irrationality and fear. You wanna know your strategy before that crash happens or ahead of time so that when something happens, you already have a plan of attack. Because when we make our investment strategy more complex by having a less defined approach, we're going to find it very difficult in order to uh, basically get things happening and functioning well. We want to make sure that no matter what, our, our plan is clearly defined and we know exactly what to do in every, situ every single circumstance so that when the time comes, we have our plan of attack and we just proceed with the plan. I want to really much encourage you guys to sit down and play with a few different circumstances. If my portfolio drops 10%, what will I do? If the CEO of this particular business I have invested in changes out for somebody else who I don't trust, what will I do? What is my plan of exit on every investment? And what is my plan of more entry on every investment? Will you dollar cost average in regularly every month? Or are you going to wait until the share comes down to a particular price before you then buy in? Obviously for myself, like I've mentioned before, passive investing makes a lot of sense because I don't have to act on emotion. Or I don't have the chance to act on emotion. I'm always going to act out of rational thinking I'm sticking to a plan and I do the same strategy every single month no matter what the market is doing. Because I trust in the long term, my share portfolio is going to rise with the returns of the market. Obviously, if I start to make some more speculative plays into single companies, then I want to know that, in that management team very well. I want to know the fundamentals of that company, how much cash they have on um, their balance sheet and how much debt they have. If the cash isn't enough to cover the debt, then I'm going to think of that as more of a risky play than I would if the care, there was enough cash to cover all of that debt. So it's important to know the ins and outs of every individual company you buy, or at least know why it is that you're buying into those listed investment companies, real estate investment trusts, and 
index funds. I must say, every time you sell a share, you do lock in a capital gains event, whether that's a uh, loss or a tax. And it's very important that you, you understand that any trades that you make could potentially hinder your performance later on because if we're losing money to capital gains in the short term, that's not money that's compounding in the long term, okay? So by leaving your money invested for longer and not just making uh, trades every day, you're potentially going to earn higher returns. So guys, I hope you got a lot of value out of this video. I hope it gives you a bit of a strategy as to what to do during times of volat volatility in the markets. When the market's red, don't act out of fear. Stay level-headed, stick to the plan, and either invest more so that you get more at a cheaper discounted price to average down, or perhaps you decide that there are other opportunities and you don't trust your original investment or the plan has changed, so you need to, you need to move on. But only you know what your strategy is and what can work for you, and you should not let anybody influence that decision for you. All right, guys, if you got any value from this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Leave me a comment below if you've made any investment mistakes during times of volatility. And uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.